Hello. We're live. Let me just post really quick. We're here to talk about Christmas romances. Because that's apparently all that Jessica has been reading. <laughs> How many did you say? 15, 16, 15? Yeah, yeah. Around there. <laughs> the past month and a half since last month. But aren't they mostly novellas or no? Um, some of them. So, like, I read the Jackie Lyle one that you read. Mm -hmm. Um, and like most of them though are full length. I think there's only a few that were novellas. Oh, but a lot of audiobooks. Yeah, like the Lisa Claypus one. Um, what is it called? It's a really long title. It's like Christmas Eve Harbor or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas Eve at Lucky Harbor. <laughs> I don't remember. I can look. Hold on. I have the audiobook. Friday Christmas Harbor. Eve at Friday Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. one I, I listened to in audio, too, and I, I took, like, less than an hour i think it's four hours long so it'll take like an hour and what 20 minutes yeah yeah it won't be too long i listened to this on audio though so i'm glad i had the audio book oh yeah me too you <laughs> read it all <laughs> <laughs> yes yesterday i was like oh crap i totally forgot we were supposed to do we this. are early this time it's just it's annoying christmas is the last weekend so you have to be the early to last weekend, right? Or late. What? The second to last weekend. Or well, the last weekend is well, I guess technically it's the 31st, it's the last weekend. So Yeah. And we're not gonna have a live show on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I mean we could, yeah, no. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hello everyone. But I think it was good because this is a Christmas book, so we should read it before Christmas. I don't think I want to read anything Christmas after Christmas is over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I can do winter, but yes, Christmas. Um, also, speaking of like adaptations, because for Lisa Clayfus, this was also adapted. I, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Passion Flix. I yeah, I haven't watched it, so I can't no, say I if it's it. good or not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, if you watched it, let us know what you think. Or any. I think, have, we, have we talked about Passion Flicks before? Have you watched anything on Passion Flicks? I've only done their trailer reactions. Oh. So I haven't watched any full length movie. Me either. I mean, I kind of planned to, but I just kept pushing it off because <laughs> I wasn't excited about anything. Yeah. They do some good books for adaptations, but I'm like, you look not that great That's of true. acting. And yeah, yeah. Do they even make movies anymore? Yeah, they're although they're just currently focusing on um, Gabriel's Inferno that series. Oh. I think that's mostly what they've been working on right now. Oh, I didn't like. But that a lot of people that. seem to really like like it. You know, their fans are big fans. Okay. I mean, they have to <laughs> they keep on making movies, so. Right. And they keep, like, I keep hearing that they get, you know, a bigger budget every time for every movie because they get more subscribers. So, I mean, good for them. Speaking of movies, the Sandra Bullock movie, did you watch the trailer? Yes, I did. It looks I'm so, so good. I'm so excited. What is it? Lost something? Lost Sid City? Is that even right? I don't even remember. But did you ever watch Romance in the Stone? No. <laughs> Probably should. Watch that. Yeah. Like, I at least knew it was based off of that movie. Um, What is this? Oh, The Lost City, yeah. It is velocity, but it looks so good. And the fact that she's a romance writer and he's the cover model. So like in yes. uh, the stone, she's a romance writer, but he's not a cover model, but she like sees her hero in him. And yeah. Oh. 
it's like so good. One and two. You have to go watch Romance in the Stone one and two. Yeah, oh, there's, there's two so of them. Oh, yes. God. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I'm really excited for them. I hope it's not like the hating game though, where it's only like it's in these ten theaters around oh, the entire yeah. country. That was annoying. Yeah, I, but I guess. I, I tried to look for, you know, a theater around me because, you know, hey, I'm in L.A. Let's see what's here. Right. No, it was like 20 something miles away. The seven dollars wasn't too bad to rent, though, because like my sister and I watched together and that's like cheaper than going to the movies. But you want the movie experience. I don't know why. Is it because it was like a smaller release that or like smaller production company? Maybe. Like that combined with like the pandemic, it just would be. I don't know. Everyone's going to see Spider Man, no problem. So, oh, yeah, that's true. But I mean, I, I think Marvel has a, a bigger budget. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> the hating game, which is fine. But I hope that opens up more. Um, right. And they're like, they, they are big stars, Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum. Mm-hmm. So I would assume. And Daniel Radcliffe. They, like, have big names. And Brad Pitt. I oh, that's true. I didn't him to show up at the end. <laughs> yes. So that's true. This has to be in theaters. There's no way it's yeah. not. This is, like, a regular regular movie, you know? Yeah. With a big budget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still have to see Spider-Man, though. I'm probably going to see it next week. Um, But our book... <laughs> Oh, yeah. A little sidetrack. I mean, do we want to talk about what we're reading right now? Oh, yeah. We usually start we with totally that. We totally that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm in a mafia romance mood. I just finished Cora Riley, um, Bound by Hatred, which was okay. Forgot how how her stories don't always work for me. Um, and then I'm also reading Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. Oh, have you not? You haven't even started that series yet? I've never I've never read her before, no. Okay. I'm interested to see what you think. Yeah. I'm almost done with it. Oh, do you like it? I like it, but I don't love it. I was just okay. really annoyed in the beginning because um, they were both so childish. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. <laughs> well, he's like a 30-year-old man, and he's acting like he's 15. I was like... I can't deal with this. <laughs> Luckily, they got over that pretty quickly, so it's fine. Yeah. Their wedding kiss was hilarious to me. So, <laughs> Oh, Annie, I hope you enjoy Spider-Man. I'm jealous. Yeah, so you're just talking about this. Yeah, I can't see. I did have a student see it Thursday night and on Friday. He said it was really good. So it's interesting how their generation super into Spider-Man. Their generation is what? Super into Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, and all that stuff. Um, I am currently reading this Rose at Midnight um, by Anne Stewart, which is just okay. Like, I don't oh. love it when historicals have points of view of, like, other characters that aren't in the romance for the plot. And I'm like, okay, but, like, I don't care what they're doing right now. Like, <laughs> back to the main couple. So, like, not a lot's happened because we had so much of this other people's point of view. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm listening to a pandemic book which i don't know how i feel it's just like really really weird romance um, or, or book it is a romance it is the world wilderness within by emma castle um i didn't know it was book two of a series but i read it because jen from the book refuge read it um and like it's like a super deadly virus that wipes out like 90% of the population and it's like an airborne virus and it started in china and this book it came out in june 2019 and I don't know, like, when she wrote it. Like, mm-hmm. if she wrote this it. is like um, Jennifer L. Armentrout. Her origin series is also a pandemic, a virus. I was it's reading like, it, like, book three, I think. Book two, two um, in 2020. <laughs> I don't so like she, reading it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I didn't think I would mind, but I'm like, this is just so weird. I don't think it's as bad because it's like a really deadly virus that's like makes your body like dry up and like it seems very sci fi y kind of and not like as realistic. But still, I'm like, this is just like so weird how so true. Like, people can describe the pandemic, like what Annie just said in her comment, like 
too easily <laughs> than like before it even happened. I guess because yeah. it's kind of cyclical, right? Like it yeah. happens every so many years. Yeah. It's just well, odd because it came out in 2019. Like, but why like, did you read it? Like, why did you decide to read it? Because Jen said it was really good. And I was like, oh, I'll try. I'll like give it a try because it's like more survival. But like they are going into like he worked for the military and she was at a, an airport like when like someone had it and they put the airport on lockdown. And like they're talking about like sports uh, facilities being used as like hospitals and like <laughs> I'm like, oh, OK. Yay. It's fine. It's like <laughs> better than I thought it would be reading it. I was like, I, it's fine. Like, I can read this until I read it, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of <laughs> too close. It's just so. I weird. would rather read like a cutesy kind of pandemic. You know, forced proximity. Yeah. They're stuck together. That's I would rather read, about, yeah, yeah, than like survival. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, our book, Bomber. huh? What? Oh, I was reading the rec- the comment saying 12 Days of Christmas" by Debbie McComber." I haven't read mm-hmm. many of her. She releases a Christmas book every single year. You write Crazy. so much. Like mm-hmm. when you go to Half Price Books, it'll be a full case of Debbie McComber, a full case of Nora Roberts, and I'm just like, is that how you pronounce her name? I always say Maycomber, but I never really know. Oh, I've always pronounced it McComber, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I've never heard her name out loud before. Or yeah, me either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like a, a staple, like Nora right. Roberts, Debbie Maycomber. Yeah. And then like that's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Danielle Steele. That's true, Danielle Steele too, yeah. Um no, we're not writers unless no. unless you are. <laughs> <laughs> readers. Well, that sucks. Well, we've already lived through kind of another one back in the early 2000s. But anyway, um, <laughs> back to our, our book. Christmas book. The Trouble with Mistletoe by Jill Chavez. What did you read it? So I will preface and say I've read 15 Christmas romances in the past like month and a half. So I was kind of over it at this point. And so I gave this one three stars. I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. So yeah, I, I give it three and a half stars, like okay. almost four, but I still did like it. it. Just wasn't, you know, amazing. Didn't wow me. Yeah, there were. Oh, okay. I'm not the only one who didn't love it. So maybe yeah. one <laughs> didn't love. It. Um, the there was just like so the fact I don't know if it was like trying to do too much, but like how she had asked him to a dance. When she was a freshman and he was a senior, that was this book, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and he was all like, I don't even remember that. And then he like acted like it wasn't his fault. And then they like totally brushed past it. And I was like, he didn't like apologize really. He didn't make up for it. It was just like, oh yeah, girls hit on me all the time. I didn't even remember yeah. you. Yeah. Like, That's this is like a huge conflict for her in the beginning and why she's so angry with him. And it was just yeah, like she's oh. like, you don't you don't recognize me or like you don't remember and anything like, oh. <laughs> she didn't like get mad i was he's like well yeah the time. and i'm just like seriously <laughs> that's true that really bothered me in the beginning because and then you know, she, like, she didn't visit it. just accepted that that reasoning yes. i mean it does make sense but at the same time still not that okay <laughs> no i don't know i feel like he had to like grovel a little more and then i like didn't i feel like i, I think Lisa read this too and I read her review and I agreed where I didn't care about him not wanting to settle down just because a girl broke up with him <laughs> in college and oh. I was like I can never get married because like a, a parent issue too like he never received no. love or anything yeah but yeah I mean that's like a typical hero kind of thing yeah so yeah, so it was just okay. Yeah, nothing. I, I loved the other, I read book three and then like a later book in the series. Book three was amazing. That one is about the couple that was teased in the second book. 
Mm -hmm. um, the security guard and then the girl that he's always arguing with. That book was so good. I love that one. How many are there like a lot in this series? Yeah. Though? And there's multiple holiday ones. <laughs> he writes such long series. Yeah, she does. I did think that the um the cat was cute. Petunia? Yeah. Yeah. It would like get stuck in the uh <laughs> the air vent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me see what else I wrote in my review. The friend group. Yeah. I like the friend group. But I think because I love them in the other books more. And I was like, oh, yeah. it's nice seeing them again, you know. I wasn't overly attached to them, but I've only read this one. So maybe like you like it more if you've read the previous books. Yeah, I think it is a problem when the animals your favorite character. <laughs> Yeah, the aunt. She's kind of just added at the end, towards the end of the book. Mm -hmm. Well, is she the one that he was watching her cat? Yes. Yeah, and then she had to, like, move into a facility. Yeah, that, that just came out of nowhere. That did come out of nowhere. Um, I listened to the audiobook. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't notice too much of a bad. problem. Yeah. yeah. I only I've noticed it was really, worse. really bad. <laughs> what? I've read way worse. So yes, I feel like yes. it was fine. <laughs> like the worst one I've ever read was the original of The Deal and the Mistake. Oh, really? Um, by L. Kennedy. It was like an older woman. Yeah, it was like some 50 year old woman narrating <laughs> both point of views. <laughs> narrating. Right like a 20 something year old guy and girl i it was so bad it was bad enough that she changed it like she redid the audiobook oh really yeah i wonder but she's self-published so she didn't she get to choose unless you just go with yeah. the, whoever the narrating company the audiobook company chooses yeah i don't know i don't know isn't it normally like tantor audio people use yeah a that's like a big production company yeah. i don't know how it works being able to choose or not or if an author doesn't normally listen to audiobooks and they don't really know what to look for. Mm -hmm. It's a little cheesy. It's like a... But like Jill Shalvis has been writing for a long time, right? And I don't know mm -hmm. how her writing's developed or if she still writes the same as she did like in the early 2000s. Because I always think of like her books as early 2000s romances, even though she's still writing today. Yeah, I do too. I've never read um, her other series. This is the only one that I've read, plus another random series, but nothing nothing from the early 2000s. But she's kind of like a, a chiclet voice, you know? Yes. Which this didn't read chiclet, though. Yeah, that's true. But I agree with what, um, where was it? Oh, what Cherry Limeade said about how when you tell people you read romance they think of like jill shalvis kind of romance like mm -hmm. the stuff you see at walmart and target yeah. yeah i feel like i read some of her books when i first started blogging like early 2010s mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff um oh i think i read something in her lucky harbor series Oh, I'm thinking of, is it J.C. Burton or Jackie Burton? J.C., I think. J. I say J.C., but some people yeah. say Jackie. I feel like her, her books are similar to Jill Shalvis, too. And I used yeah. to read a lot. And, and Susan Elizabeth Phillips, like that yes. genre of contemporary fiction, romance, contemporary romance. Yes. That's like bordering between romance and women's fiction. But this was pretty romantic. Yeah, I mean, this series is romance. She does have actual woman's fiction yeah. um, that she's focusing on right now. 
I don't I don't think she's released any new romances in a while. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Like this almost just friends, I think, was women's fiction. Like a uh, a lot of um those covers are the ones with with a dog on them and then like a background some <laughs> beach or whatever. How do I find I hate the app. I can never figure out no, I'm going to use my computer. I hate Goodreads app because I can't figure out how to look up stuff. I don't I don't use the app. I just use my browser. Or you don't? Yeah. Yeah, her Lucky Harbor series I feel like was really popular. I think yeah. that might be her first series. Really? I don't know. Since That's... it was published in 2010, has she only been writing since 2010? No. No, She's... I think that was republished. Oh. It's got a, uh, quite a few covers. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a lot steamier than Katie anticipated. Yeah, I mean, with these kinds of books, you expect kind of fade to black or closed door. It's nothing like that steamy, but mm -hmm. there is still some, which is nice. I'm having a hard time figuring out what I actually published and what didn't. So someone thinks says like published in 2021, but it has five ratings. So I'm like, okay, that did not come out today, like this year. Um, her Are you still looking at Lucky Harbor. No, I'm looking at just all of her writing in general. Oh. Okay, so she has a series with William and Mara, which I feel like they publish more women's. Yeah, fiction. that's the one she published with. Um, yeah. It's the Wildstone series. Oh my gosh. So it says she wakes up from a coma, learns that her fiance and her best friend have fallen in love. She's lost her job and the life she knew is gone. <laughs> so she, <laughs> that, care. that sounds exactly like, um, well, not exactly, but um, Sophie Kinsella. Uh, oh. Remember me? Like her amnesia one? Yeah. I feel like she's like the American Sophie Kinsella, though, too. Like, Mm, yeah Johnson. yeah but yeah all of her covers are just very like dog on the cover <laughs> yeah the cover. but like you said it's like a walmart cvs kind of romance mm -hmm. like what <laughs> they what they find acceptable to put on their shelves mm -hmm. sarah desson interesting is Sarah Dessen still writing? I think so. But I don't I don't really keep track anymore. I used to love her. Yeah, back when I was in high school, I loved her. Mm-hmm. She has a new series coming out. Jill Chavez does next year. On Lake Tahoe. Heartwarming story, and of course there's a dog on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> is it Avon or William Morrow? Um, William and Morrow. Mm -hmm. William Morrow. I always say William and Morrow, but it's William Morrow. During the snowstorm of the century, Levi is stranded on a ski lift with a beautiful stranger. <laughs> it's a Christmas romance. Well, at least a winter romance. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so. she loves her winter romances. Yeah, I wonder if that's what sells for her, like her uh -huh. Christmas. She's the... The more romancy Debbie Maycomber. Mm -hmm. I've also noticed too, is it, um, who was it? Jenny Hale. Um, she has a ton of Christmas romances and a bunch that became Hallmark movies. Oh, so, really? Yeah. I only I like recently heard of Jenny Hale. They know How she, hers. I didn't know she had that many books. Yeah. So one I actually watched <laughs> last year I watched and then I figured out that it was based off one of her books. Um, it has Alaric from Vampire Diaries oh. in it. <laughs> yeah. As the um, main guy. Yeah. Christmas Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. Is that oh. And I'd watched it. Oh my god. They're all all our books are either Christmas or summer. 
Yes. So she <laughs> well made for some romances. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. Wow. And they're all over half price books. So I have a couple. Mm. What's the one that you just said? Christmas Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. Oh. 2015. Because it was like, yeah, she's re- helping design his family's Christmas party in their house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's the gorgeous, brooding Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So a bunch of hers were Hallmark movies and they like say on the cover Hallmark movie. I know I wonder how popular like when it's the summer I don't feel like reading like a summer romance. So I wonder how popular like summer romances are because like you said she only writes either Christmas or summer. Mm-hmm. But like when it's summer I'm like give me a, a not I'm sorry when it's winter I'm just like give me a nice Christmas romance but I feel like fall and winter are very they're they're cozy Yes. Like, cozy up with a book season. Yes. And not in the summer. In the summer, all I wanted was mafia romances. So I don't know <laughs> what it makes me want. Yeah. I mean, beach reads are a thing, though. Yeah. So. But is a beach read, like, a summer romance? Is that what's considered a beach read? Yeah, I don't know. Because a lot of people would consider, like, a, a thriller to be a, a beach read. Say, on vacation, so many people were had thrillers that they were reading. Because I always look at what people are reading <laughs> when I go. Like, <laughs> and there's so many. Yeah. Were yeah. Yeah. Read on the beach during vacation. <laughs> About people on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, at least with winter romances, since I don't live in an area where it gets that cold or it doesn't snow here i i like reading about snow in books you know like i can experience it that way yeah how warm was it today um it was in the 60s it was actually pretty warm today oh yeah what does it normally get to in the winter like what is your norm 50s okay so it's not that warm. In Florida, yeah, it's, it's always like, like Oh God, Florida. <laughs> I can't. I remember when I went to visit Sarah, it was like yeah. 10 or 11 p.m. and I was sweating from the from the humidity. It's so humid. Yeah. It's impossible to read a book on the beach. Um <laughs> uh, it's hard to oh, read I'll during read. vacation for me in general. Like I always I bring a bunch work. of books. Yeah, yeah. And then I never get to them because I'm like, I want to eat. I want to go see things. <laughs> I want to go to the pool. I don't know what oh, it yeah. is. But maybe it's the sun. But like I read more not on vacation than I do on vacation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me too. But getting the paper, the Kindle Paperwhite was so nice for vacation because it's waterproof. And so it would like start like sprinkling rain and I was like I'm fine my book's not getting wet like it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah my older Kindle paper white wasn't wasn't the waterproof one so okay. what are the differences have you heard anything about the new paper white no I haven't I think not we talked even... about it a little bit right I don't what? know anybody who has it yeah I don't but know but I thought it was in colors right that one was the previous generation, though. Which one? The one that you got? Isn't that yes. the one with the different cover colors? Colors, yeah, but the new one doesn't come in colors, right? Oh. Let's see. They always mm-hmm. have that little handy graph, though, to compare everything. Oh, yeah. It's a bigger display, I guess. Oh, adjustable warm light. Is that what you have? Do you have warm light settings? No. I wouldn't want that. It's like yellow. I I use it for my phone. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's what everyone's saying. It has a warm light. I don't think I would use that. My students use it on their Chromebook, and it, because we have, this is the first year that they, we have Chromebooks for every student, and it's like orange, and it, 
throws me off so much looking at their screen. Well, it's supposed to be better for your eyes, right? <laughs> I know, but it's like an orange screen. It's just like so you have is to get that orange. On theirs, it is. Oh, but yeah, I have like the what do you call it? The night night shift on my oh, phone. Is that black so... text? Huh? Do you have black text then, or no? Um, no. For my phone in general, when it turns oh. nine, it'll turn like a little bit orange, oh. and then nine a.m. it'll turn back to normal. But then on my Kindle, I, I recently just changed it to the sepia-ish color, you know? Uh-huh. Let me open it up. Oh, isn't the Kindle Oasis, like, really expensive? Yeah. Like, over $200. Does it do that much? $200? <laughs> what does this even do? I don't know if you can tell. It still looks pretty pretty white. <laughs> yeah. But that's why. But, but it's not, you know, orange orange. It's just a little tinted, a little warm. Right. I don't love how the oasis is like a square. Oh yeah, which is There's a big, a big um side. side. Yeah, is that yeah, so? It's you ugly. Want to hear, like, I don't know. People, there's this thing though that like you clip onto your Kindle and you have the remote, and so you just have to like sit there and just click the remote, and it turns the page for you. Yeah. <laughs> So if I'm, like, laying in bed and I, like, hold it with my right hand, I have to, like, take it and pick it up my hand up and swipe it. You don't have to pick your hand up. You just go, boop, and it turns your page Wait, for you. Wait, you can, like, just use your thumb? No, but what if you don't want to raise your hand to turn the page? Wait, you don't have to use the hand that you're holding with the Kindle. No, that's, like, awkward. Why? <laughs> wait, wait. Awkward. Like, if I'm reading and then if I'm holding my Kindle, I've got to go, like, that to, like, Yeah. How no, but if wait. With my other hand. You're holding with this? Yeah. Then you just do that. I just feel like that's awkward. Or like if I'm laying in bed, <laughs> and I'm just like up front and, and like on front of me and like my hands are like this and I'm just like sitting there reading. Do you ever do that? <laughs> I do that I a lot. don't do that. But wait, I feel like at that... one point... What? Wait, go ahead. At one point it went viral on TikTok and like sold out everywhere. This like clicker <laughs> oh the cl yeah i was gonna ask how does that work it's just like a, it's this little thing you just like clip on to the kindle and i think when you press the button it like adds pressure to that thing on your kindle page yeah <laughs> yeah okay but the oasis is waterproof which okay i don't know what's so amazing about it maybe it's just like a crisper screen it's got more LEDs, but I don't even know if that makes and a difference. The oh, what the signature edition? What is this? Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. $190. Whoa. For a paperweight? Yeah. I don't know what this means. Oh yeah, signature edition. Oh, plus wireless charging. Okay. Oh. Interesting. I don't know. Have you heard of Chirp for audiobooks? Yeah. Charles that tell you about it. Charles messaged me about it. I'm interested in it, but I haven't bought anything from it. Uh like he told you about it just to use it or what? Yes. He's like, Oh, have you heard of it or used it? Because he's been using it because they have good deals on audiobooks. Yeah, that's always what I see. Like, uh, an author will share uh, an audiobook deal, and it's from Chirp. Yeah. And it goes up to three times speed, because I know people love any play, but I think it only goes up to, like, 1.8. Oh. Like, how does anybody use any play? I haven't, I haven't used that one. No. And then they're screwed, but they cut you off. Oh, yeah. I think... Well, I know Audible goes to 3.5, and then mm -hmm. Libro does too. Mm -hmm. 
Do they have sales often though? Audible and Libro? Audible does. Not like a lot, but generally they do like once a month or every other month. Audible so expensive. Yeah, I know. But I I have the silver membership, so I pay every other month. Okay. Which is fine. Yeah. But their sales are usually buy one, buy two for one or buy three for two and then get this the selection of audios for five dollars each. Oh, okay. I'm just spoiled by my library. Yeah, me too. Great. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a deal for for chirp. Chirp is free. You just had to pay for the books. Oh, it's not How like how much are the books? Um, they're all like full price, but they have a lot of deals. So like they'll have ninety nine cent deals or one ninety nine deals. Oh, but audio books okay. are expensive. They're like eighteen dollars, yeah. and I'm like, who pays yeah. eighteen dollars for an audio book? I don't know. Oh, Audible. Well, that's a good deal. How much do you get for the subscription? Do you get books? You get a credit? Um, if it's premium, I think it's a kind of like the romance package. Right? You know what was amazing was Audible Escape. Is that what it was? Oh called? yeah, that's what it's called. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was I was there before it wasn't even called that. I was using it as the romance package. Like they just called it the romance package. That was so nice. But I yeah. get why it was losing authors money because it was like seven dollars on top of Kindle Unlimited and it was just like unlimited audiobooks. And that was amazing. Mm hmm Yeah, I had it with my with my subscription too i didn't even have to pay extra i got rid of it i know but i know audiobooks are really expensive to produce so i get why authors won't, weren't getting <laughs> their money out of it but it was so nice Ugh, that was so long ago too yeah that's crazy and they were all good romances yeah, this is all I did in college. Just listen to Audible Escape. <laughs> it's sad. But it's fine. I am spoiled by my library, even though it doesn't have everything I want. Like, I didn't know the Spanish Love Deception has an audiobook. Oh, yeah, they recently published it, right? Yeah, but mine doesn't have it. Oh. Um, yeah, it came even before the, the new paperback. But I guess, like, with the supply chain, it would make sense. Yeah. Easier to produce the audiobook <laughs> than make a million copies of books. That's true. Oh, have you done this? Like, buy, if you buy the ebook or paperback, you get the audio. Never know for an audiobook. They, really they used to be $1.99, I remember. Like, if you bought an ebook and then the audio would come at $1.99. And then they recently, they only recently upped the price, like in the last year or two, to seven forty nine. Wow. Yeah, it's so low if you already bought the ebook. Mm -hmm. But I know that um, is in Montlake. A lot of their Kindle Unlimited books have free audiobooks. Yeah, all the Amazon published books are audio included. Is Montlake not the same as Amazon Publishing? No, it is. It's like a, oh, okay. it's one of their imprints. Okay. Oh, I do remember Mindy Kaling. Uh, that's vaguely a memory of mine. Oh, <laughs> for what? For audiobooks. I think it was an Audible Escape. Oh. Was Audible. Okay. Yeah. Hoopla and Libby are really good. I Anything still haven't tried fun? Hoopla. Hoopla has more indie published romances than my other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, for The Bridge Kingdom, she is um, exclusively publishing with Audible first. So, like, the third book, I think, is already out, but it's only out on Audible for six months. And then it'll come out in paperback, which it pains me that this book I want to read will be out for six months <laughs> and I can't read it. I can't listen to fantasy, though. I can't. 
No. No, like, like I can't listen to fantasy books, audiobooks in general. They just yeah. go over my head. <laughs> like these new worlds and yeah. these new words. I, I need to see them. <laughs> I guess I don't listen to fantasy audio. I don't think I ever have. No. I usually physically read those. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting that they do the whole series for her, though. Usually, like, yeah. isn't it just the first book in a series from what I've seen? Yeah. Have you seen Kobo has been... I'm surprised you didn't get one. Kobo's been sending people a Kobo to read. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm just Is like... Is this on TikTok, though? Um, No, I think it's um, some TikTokers, but I think some Instagrammers got it, too. But I'm like, I don't think I would accept that because when would I ever use a Kobo? <laughs> like, <laughs> never. Except right, for like one or two stories, but I just, just like, the the Tali Herber and then maybe the Chloe Lease. That's yeah, it. <laughs> more like the the mistletoe motive. I think it was to promote a couple of like Kobo releases. And yeah. Kobo is an actual e-reader, but I'm like, what would you use that e-reader for if you already have a Kindle? Yeah. <laughs> like, hey guys, I got a Kobo, but I don't use it. I still use my paper white. <laughs> yeah. But can't you I think you can like use the Kindle app on your Kobo, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I remember <laughs> I downloaded I think um Colleen Hoover, her Finding Cinderella, it released first on Kobo and I was too impatient to wait. Yeah. So, because it was free, so I downloaded it. I le- downloaded the Kobo app on my phone and read it there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But Bridge Kingdom, like, it isn't. Is it published by Motley? No, right? No, it's self-published, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. But then the ebook, the audio is free with it, so that's interesting. I don't know. I wonder how good of like a deal it is to do Audible exclusive. Right, because so many authors do it. Right. Came out in November, so I'm gonna have to wait until like April <laughs> to read this book. <laughs> is it the final book? No. But it's different characters. Oh. Um. Zara. Which one was Zara? Oh, now it's saying perfect for fans of From Blood and Ash and The Court of Silver Flames. I was mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. didn't this come out before those? Yeah, but they got to yeah. update that yeah. copy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this was out before. It was so, oh wow, it has 44,000 ratings, the first book does. The Bridge Kingdom? Yeah. On Goodreads? Yeah. Okay, because I'm looking at Amazon, but it's still high. It's got over 5,000 ratings on Amazon. Oh, wow. Yeah, this says there's going to be six books in the series. Mm, It's not showing the audio for me, though. For an inadequate air? Huh? The inadequate air? No, the Bridge Kingdom. Oh. I don't know. Well, I'll read it eventually. Yeah. I have not read Flock. I have. Isn't it part of that trilogy? Yeah, I've read the first two. And they were okay. I just don't like it when the love interest changes throughout a series. And it did. (laughs) So, yeah. Oh, that reminds me. You love Sarah J. Maas. So, I read Throne of Glass in 2016. And I just reread it. But Goodreads shows my review from 2016 to mark that I read it today. So, I got seven comments in the past two days on that book review of people like responding to the review and I had to post like guys this review is six years old (laughs) like I read this six years ago first and now I'm reading it again so like it's fine (laughs) everyone's like oh my gosh you're just reading this I was like yeah but I I don't know what you want because I know something about the romance in that series so yeah 
I don't know. And I didn't love it as much as I did the first time around, so. A lot of audiobook covers are really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if they have to, like, don't put any budget in it because they need a, like, square cover. Oh, okay. So it's got this blue cover and then the current cover. I guess the, I think the blue one was the original, right? What different colors are there? The Bridge Kingdom, there's this blue, blue cover. I don't know how to describe it. I thought they both were. Um, yeah, okay, the other one is blue, but this one's more blue. This one? Which one is this one? That one's the new one, the current one. Oh. Yeah, but. This the... one's the one that I have, hold on. Yeah. I have this one. Yeah, that one. That's the blue one I'm talking about. This is what I have physically, though. Yeah, I guess that was the original. 2019? Yeah. Those are the only two covers showing. Oh. Oh, that's says Bay Crate. I don't know. I think this was the original. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of audiobook ones look like they were just like slopped together in Photoshop and they called it a day. Like they are really bad sometimes. <laughs> but I don't know like if they care about the audio covers as much. Yeah. I wonder how much money they make through audiobooks. Like is it a big money making thing for them? I think so. Yeah. Like compared to ebooks and print. Yeah, I don't know compared to ebook and print, but it's still I feel like it could hold its own. Yeah. But I feel like Audible has a big stronghold on audiobook mm -hmm. market. I like the ones like the covers where they just add a the same similar color behind it to make the cover square. Just be like, slap it on to make it <laughs> the audio cover. Yeah. Um, so much about the publisher industry I don't know or won't mm -hmm. understand. Yeah, like, okay, large print. That still like confuses me. I've only ever seen it in libraries is that the reason why? Yeah. Is that it? Just for libraries? Yeah, I don't know. Or just like people with disabilities who need the large print. I don't know if like, but I would assume that's really expensive to have to buy because I don't think they mm -hmm. print that. Because there's like a small large print section of half price books, but I mostly see, I don't know if they sell large print like at Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And it's not or, for every book either. Right. I don't know. And I feel like people, though, who need large print now are more likely to do e audio. So much. Our ebook, yeah. Eas more feasible to be able to enlarge the print to what you want. That's true. Your, your font is humongous. Okay, that's only when I run. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Not when I'm like normally <laughs> reading. But it is nice. Yeah. Or, like, if someone forgets their glasses, like, my dad has reading glasses, and if he doesn't have them, you just make your font super big, and then you can see. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess, because I think my grandma gets large print from the library. Mm -hmm. Her eyesight's not very good. Nor is her hearing, but that's what happens when you get old. <laughs> Did you they, ever read? Oh, go ahead. Oh, did you ever read the new Tracy Garvis Graves? I recently finished this one and I was so annoyed because half of the book, over half of the book, was just talking about the main couple's previous marriages. Like, mm -hmm. 
I was like, why? I literally don't care about that. And this is the most I've ever skimmed during an audio. Like as soon as they started flashbacking, yeah, as soon as they started their flashbacks, I skipped to the end of the chapter because I was like, I don't care. I literally don't care. Oh my gosh. No, I haven't read her books in a while. And then the romance kind of sucked too. Didn't even have like a, a definitive ending. No. But I was going to ask, has anybody read good Christmas romances lately? I know. Did you like the Jackie Lau book? Yeah, I did. It's really cute. The heroine was so judgy, though, and I was getting so mad at her. She's like, oh, my <laughs> God. He's, like, wearing a tie. He carries a stain remover pen. He doesn't like tacos or mayonnaise. I'm like, why do you <laughs> care? Just let it gotta, be. Gotta emphasize the opposites. <laughs> oh, I was so annoyed with her. She was so rude. <laughs> she just was making yeah she was but like for some reason i didn't have a problem with it i was just like okay huh interesting i have not to change from what i just asked with christmas romances but have you listened to faded mates recently no, I okay. haven't. They interviewed like a rare book collector and uh-huh. she curated like a rare historical romance collection or just like romance in general that they sold to a university and they like have that collection at a college that she sold to. Oh, it was really interesting. Yeah. Which college? I don't know if they said, I don't remember, but it sold like right away. She was shocked that like when she was finished and like, advertised it like that it was for sale a lot of people wanted it yeah it was interesting hearing their conversation though so she was a or the person was just a regular collector she like works with rare books and so they Mm -hmm. talked about like oh it was like Isaac Newton's book or something like first edition and it was like going for a crazy amount of money and that's what people normally think of when you hear like rare books but that um she decided to do the project for historical romances. Mm. So, but yeah. did they talk about which specific books? Were Some the of them, like Lord of Scoundrels, and like they did mention like Lisa Clayfus's earliest books, and how there's a lot that they know there's like thousands that were printed first printing, but now they're like impossible to find, and they're like, well, where are all these books? Like, if they had thousands, here. Thousands, we have them, right? It was funny. It was fun to listen to. Mm-hmm. And then, like, trying to hunt for a first edition because it's hard to tell if it's a first edition or not and how to tell that. You know, they could have just reached out to us about that. I was like, we know all of this. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. How hard that is, though, looking for the first edition. Yeah. And getting, like, multiple copies of a book that you don't want, the book that – the edition that you don't want. Right. Yeah. And having to make sure – you ask them like what it is and what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, can I get pictures of this? Like, can you open the first page for me? <laughs> yeah. Or like um I think they did mention like Beverly Jenkins original books too and how those are hard to find. hmm Still looking for those. Oh yeah. I couldn't believe it when I when I got it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm 90% sure this is gonna be a hardcover because it always is. <laughs> Just got to try. Mm-hmm. I feel like there are so many Christmas novellas. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize there were so many novellas until we started the readathon. I downloaded the Cassie Mint one, and we'll see how that is. I feel like a lot of oh, people... Oh, is that Lisa's? What? Lisa's author? Yeah. Dipped in Holly. I haven't read that one. Gifting me to his best friend. Isn't that Katie Robert? Yeah. That was good. Didn't love oh, there it, were, but there were a lot of um anthologies that came out recently. Like the twelve. Yeah, I still years. let's see. What was the one? Oh no, that one wasn't Christmas. I was thinking of like the the rake I'd like to F that that yeah. anthology. Yeah, I got that one. It's over there. You got the paperback? Mm-hmm. Dang. 
from Love Sweet Arrow. Because I have a oh. pink one of. Oh, I think you said this. Yes. Duke one. I, I wanted it to match my Duke one. I haven't read it yet. I read. I sitting and reading 500 three, pages. I read three out of five. So I was like, all right, I'll count this as read. <laughs> I can't do that. Because then also it does your like page count with Goodreads at the end of the year. And I feel like that's true. Oh, that's true. I mean, I don't really look at page count anyway. No, I don't either. But just knowing that it's off bothers The Sierra Simone one in that one was so disappointing, I will say. Really? I had so many high hopes for it. But isn't the Joanna Sheep one really good? That's what I've heard. I think so. Yeah. Because I, I think the Sierra Simone was the only one I didn't like. Mm-hmm. Because the hero was just way too obsessed with his ex-wife. I was yeah. like, come on. this nove- it's, it's, a, it's a novella. I don't want that. Yeah. Oh, but I did. When I ordered it from Love Sweet Arrow, it came with like a signed book play and cute stickers. So. Mm-hmm. That this was true. In the <laughs> podcast? Yeah. Buying multiple copies. Which I feel like I don't do too often trying to like really find a book Mm -hmm. it's only if i buy from like a bigger place like thrift books or whatever and they never can show you a copy of it yeah um usually i'm lucky though so you can't complain too much (laughs) (laughs) to those but like they did discuss like stumbling upon like garage sales and like finding them there in people's collections that's what happened to me with Mm -hmm. this it was just like someone's estate sale where they had a crazy and people don't realize what they have like I saw it and my heart started racing I was like this book is worth like three hundred dollars and I'm holding it in my hand and it's 80 cents I was like do these people know what they have oh my gosh I was freaking out when it happened (laughs) because people don't I bet you like people have like old school Beverly Jenkins just sitting around and have no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Riley, that's true too. With the <laughs> forgetting what you have. Oh. That's, <laughs> I have a that's like almost just all Lisa, you know, <laughs> she buys multiple <laughs> copies. She it's forgets. a brand new book. She like pre-orders yeah. it and then goes out and buys it and then <laughs> she has two copies. I usually don't do that. Yeah, no, I know what I have. <laughs> they do all have similar titles, though. Well, that's holidays cool. are hell. Oh, urban fantasy holiday edition. That's interesting. Yeah. Anthologies are just so popular, especially lately. whether they're traditionally published or indie published. Mm -hmm. But I just like get intimidated when it's like 12 authors and I'm like, that's such a long book. I can't. Yeah. And like the Colleen Hoover ones, um, those ones are just, there are too many authors that the stories are way too short. So it's like, they're not even good. Yeah. Which is disappointing. Are they like 20 page stories? How long are they? Um, I'm going to say like 40, mm. 50. Still really short. Well, then it's always like there's a couple that I don't love and then some that are good. So like I was reading the Mistletoe Christmas and I've only read two of the stories, but they're like, okay. But I want to get to the other two, but I'm like, I don't really want to pick it up. <laughs> it. You read like, the okay. Eloisa James one, right? Yeah. Okay. You didn't like that one, but then Desiree told me she loved that one. Really? Yeah. I was just, like, obsessed with her, and I was like, why do you like her? You, like, just met her. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) The love for that one. Well, if it's insta-love and a novella, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I guess. And the second one started out good, but then it was just okay. Like, I wanted more to it, I guess, which I guess is the point of a novella, but... Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, a, lot a lot of them is, yeah, like they're a charity, think. like a charity reason, you oh, know. Yeah. But also, they'll like publish them as individual novellas after they've been in the, the anthology. Because, like, yeah. isn't Joanna Sheep's available as an individual oh, yeah. novella? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. 
like when they're allowed to do because I think also Kerrigan Burns was in that Highlander anthology that came out in but the it was a previously before. published book right yeah. yeah a lot of times they're just they're not new books so like a another way to make some cash yeah that's true too but I wonder if they even get that much money from doing anthologies because then you're like splitting it with four authors. Mm -hmm. If it's already published, then it's probably wouldn't make that much of a difference, you know? Yeah. Do we want to talk about our next book? Yeah. We're going indie, back to indie with yeah. a, a dark romance. Yeah. Right? I don't even know what it's about anymore. Oh, retelling, right. Yeah. Read yes, Hooked. we're reading Hooked by Emily McIntyre, which is a retelling of Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Hook, but then which I was like... Just, someone like talked about this like 20 minutes ago, and I was like, how do you know that this is our book? Because you picked like, it up, Jess. <laughs> I picked it up? Yeah, when you we were showing our... I was showing my Kindle. Oh, and I was <laughs> Knowing that, okay, I was like, why did you just ask about hooks? I didn't realize I put it in. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was like, Jess. <laughs> totally flew over my head. <laughs> oh, we are reading this one. How did I not even notice that I picked this up? It's just the one sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, but she that going to a signing I'm going to, so I'm excited to read this. Oh, which signing? Um, I'm pretty sure she'll be at the Nashville one that I'm going to. Music City with the Bells. Mm, yeah. Um, That's in February. Let's see. But I'm pretty sure someone was talking about this, and I think that Wendy is Peter's daughter. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And it's Wendy and Hook's story. Mm -hmm. Like the, the villain. But I hope it's dark, because people said that Anna Huang book was dark, and it was not dark. So. Twisted um the well, second book the first one oh like because like, he's apparently like part of the mafia but i'm like okay but that's not dark yeah it was more suspense than dark yeah mm, i don't know does riley can riley tell us if it's dark <laughs> is this dark um but tori's gonna be joining us and i know tori really loved it so mm -hmm. I don't know if there's an audiobook though. I know her other books are on audio. There is. There's an audiobook. Good. It's a dark contemporary romance, not a fantasy. Um, where the villains get the girl. Not a literal retelling, but still a retelling. Well, yeah. yeah. Inspired by, I guess. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's on KU. We haven't this read actually dark. Okay. Wait, what? We haven't read an indie romance in a while, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scale <laughs> one through five. I don't know what would be like the darkest romance I've read. Hilly Cole. She goes dark. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what this would be considered. But we'll, our live show's on the 29th? Yes. The last Saturday. Oh, the cover for book two looks so pretty. Oh, I didn't know there was one. It's called Scarred. So, um, Ooh. Lion King? That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> yeah, like Scar, you know? But is it? There is a king who passed. He left behind two sons. Um... Isn't that Scar and Mufasa? It should be. But it doesn't actually say Lion King, you know? <laughs> Where are you seeing this? It's not on Google. On Amazon. Oh. But it's not on Goodreads. Oh. Oh, oh there it I is. I can add it later. Um, it's yeah. January 4th, so we could, we could read it right after our live show. Almost. 
Huh. Tilly Cole, I would say, like, about similar, although some, some of her books do get a little bit darker than Sea of Ruin, but they're, they're like, about the same level, because Pam does have some pretty dark books. Raphael, though, that we read. Oh, what is that series called? Because that series was crazy. That was so dark. The Deadly Virtue series. But, yes. like, I didn't love... I was like, this isn't necessary. I don't mm -hmm. know. It was this. a little too gratuitous. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a fine line, you know? Right. And I feel like just didn't focus on the romance enough. But mm -hmm. she also, like, took a while to write book two for that series. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know if it just didn't do well. I don't know. That's cool, though. I feel like there's no Lion King retellings yeah especially for scar yeah that's exciting i feel like we do mm -hmm. get peter Pan a lot, but who else besides katie robert um there's a couple of young adult ones oh. um oh i didn't know this had an audiobook well that'll oh. be four days the live show so so oh, that, <laughs> speed minute. read it three times the speed <laughs> yeah oh i guess genevieve makes a good point the lion king is a retelling of hamlet so if they're going to do a retelling of lion king mm -hmm. it would be a retelling of anyways I, yes that's true i forgot about <laughs> that yeah oh the description says it's not a retelling i mean they say that but it's i consider it a retelling okay Yeah, that is true, though. Okay, but that's yeah, all we that's have. It. We gotta get up for work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> When's your break start? Break. Yeah, it starts on Wednesday. We only get a week and a half. Yeah, it sucks that the holidays are actually on a weekend. So right, I'm like literally it's five days until Christmas. Why am I going to work? But it's. <laughs> And everyone else has to work anyways, so. Yeah. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for joining. Have a great Enjoy Christmas. Your holidays. Yeah. And we'll see you in 2022. Oh, my gosh. Next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.